Baruch Ato Adonai Eloheinu Melech Ha'olam Dayan Ha'emet At this time we care for the parents, we care over the heart. A little bit on the rest. Because today is a holiday, a Yom Tov, Hanukkah, so services are somewhat limited. We don't perform any deeply emotional eulogies on Hanukkah, on the holiday. And we'll see soon how appropriate really it is, how our beloved uh, Leah, Yelena, was such an individual that has a lot of relationship to the holiness of the time of Hanukkah and to Yom Tov in general. It was even her name, Leah Bas Yom Tov. Yelena, was, her father was Yom Tov, so this is the sign of from God, clearly the hand of the Almighty, the divine providence in life. Happy is the one who has not followed the counsel of the wicked, nor stood in the path of sinners, nor sat in the company of the scornful, Rather, that one's delight is in the Torah of the Lord, meditating in God's Torah day and night, and will be like a tree planted by streams of water that yields its fruit in season, whose leaf will not wither, and whatever that one does prospers. Not so the wicked who are like chaff that the wind drives away. Therefore the wicked shall not survive judgment, nor sinners in the assembly of the righteous, for the Lord loves the way of the righteous, but the way of the wicked is doomed. Ashes Chayel, a woman of valor, who can find? She is more precious than pearls. Her husband places his trust in her, and so he profits. She brings him good, not harm, all the days of her life. She seeks out wool and flax, and cheerfully does the work of her hands. She is like the merchant's vessel bringing sustenance from afar. She arises while it is yet night time, giving food to her household and a portion to her workers. She envisions a field and acquires it and plants a vineyard with the fruit of her labors. She invests herself with strength and makes her arms powerful. She discerns that her enterprise is profitable so her light does not go out at night. She stretches out her hands to the machine as her palms hold the spindle. She opens her palms to the poor and extends her hands to the needy. She has no fear of the snow, for all her household is dressed in fine clothing. Luxurious bedspreads she fashions, linen and wool colored in lavender are her clothing. Distinctive in the assembly is her husband, where he sits with the elders of the land. She makes a cloak to sell. She supplies the merchants with belts. She is robed in strength and dignity, and she joyfully awaits the future. She opens her mouth with wisdom, and a lesson of kindness is on her tongue. She looks after her household and never tastes the bread of laziness. Her children arise and praise her. Her husband, he lauds her. Many women have excelled, but you excel them all. Grace is elusive and beauty is vain, but a woman who fears God, she shall be praised. 
Give her the fruits of her hand, and let her be praised in the gates by her very own deeds. And that beautiful scripture, the poem of Solomon, Asha Schael, the woman of valor, so eloquently describes our beloved Leah, who was just that kind of an individual so unique. I'm here today really as a representative. The family is very close with a dear friend of mine uh, and a very great family. Many of you may remember Rabbi Kazin, Zecher Tzadik Lebracha, the great Rabbi Kazin from uh, Lee Road, Tzemach Tzedek Synagogue, Ashoichit, a Tzadik Yid. His whole life was helping other people. And the Vladimir is very close, and the family is close with Rabbi Kazin's family. Rabbi Kazin has a grandson, Rabbi Yossi Marazov, who runs many wonderful organizations in our community. And he would have liked to have been here today but he's in New York at this time. Rabbi Kazin has a number of grandsons who are powerful uh, rabbis, great people in the community and their wives, great leaders, and we're fortunate to have that wonderful family. Fortunate is the family that is close with Rabbi Kazin's mishpucha. Just the name, when I hear Rabbi Kazin's name, it warms my heart. I remember his devotion to other people, what a great man he was, and how his family follows in the footsteps. Uh, Leah was born May 10th, 1952. It was Shabbos Kodesh, no surprise. It was on Shabbos Saturday, so if it was late at night, so maybe it was just after Shabbos, it still has the flavor of Shabbos, but probably it was on Shabbos, Shabbos itself, the holy day of Shabbos. And she was born in Baku. Her father, Yom Tov, Avshalomov. What a beautiful name, Yom Tov, a happy day. And her brother says, we'll see, she, she made every day a Yom Tov. Whatever would happen, Leah wanted people to be happy. She wanted people to be joyful. She tried to make people appreciate the beauty and joy in life and not focus on depressing things, on sadness, but to look at the godliness in life and to aspire, to celebrate, grab every minute of our life that we have. Her father was Yom Tov, and uh, her mother was Gulbahar, which means a beautiful spring flower. And uh, in indeed, indeed, that's really, the family was indicative of that. You know, you think of a spring flower, you think of the holiday of Shavuot. Shavuos, when God gave the Torah, the, the, the Har, the Mount Sinai was decorated with so many beautiful spring flowers to grace the beautiful Torah. And so what a, a couple, Yom Tov and Gul Bahar, what beautiful names really to celebrate our history, to celebrate who we are. I, we always think if we spent more time thinking about our names that our families gave us, that we have the great legacy it speaks of. And uh, as I say, she was born in Baku in Azerbaijan. Uh, she had a, um, a, a, she has with us, Baruch Hashem, Lahavdil Ben Chaim Lechaim. Her older sister, Elmira, is here today. And then a sister, Lahavdil Ben Chaim Lechaim, Sophia, who passed away. Her brother, he should live long and be well. Vladimir is, is here with us. And of course, our beloved Leah. Uh, Yom Tov, her father, was a bank auditor. He was a very strong man on his principles. And it was not easy to change his mind. When he committed himself to something, he was steadfast. Gul Bahar, her mother, was a children's nurse. And during the war, World War II, she worked in the military hospital in Baku. Leah's motto was always, be happy, be happy. She was a, 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 an entertaining person. She always had a sharp sense of humor. She would be funny. She wanted people to find joy in life, a joy child. She kept the family smiling, even sometimes when it may have been difficult to smile. Leah was married in 1975 to Mirza, also from Azerbaijan, um, Babayev. And Mirza was a man of all trades, talented individual. You know how Jewish people over the years 
had to find a way to always do this, that, and the other thing, many things to do. And so Mirza was very talented. He was a car mechanic. He did home repair. And Leah was an accountant. She did accounting. And they met and married in 1975. And uh, all of their grand, you know, all of her grandparents were alive at that time and able to be at that wedding, a great, a great moment for her and the whole family. In March of 1993, uh, Mirza, y Yelena, and Alex all came to America. Alex had been born in, in April of 1979 in, in Baku. And the reason the family came here was primarily to give Alex opportunity in America, as well as to be with her brother and older sister that were already here, Leah's brother and older sister. Mirza, her husband, worked, many of you know, right down the street here on Taylor Road, there was a car repair, Mr. O's. Those of us from the area remember Mr. O's, and Mirza worked there as a mechanic. When Alex went to Hebrew Academy, Alex remembers fondly how his parents had sent him to Hebrew Academy, where he met Mrs. Mann, and, uh, and Mrs. Mann was an important influence. And Rabbi Pfeiffer, he mentions to me, Rabbi Abish Pfeiffer, who is also a very vibrant force in the community. Um, I think he said one of the rabbis at Hebrew Academy helped him find a job at Stop and Shop in the Cedar Center there. And Leah continued to work. She worked to help the family. The family was her focus. That was her life. She worked on an assembly line at Century Greco. And, of course, when Alex met, uh, N met Natalie, uh, if I said Natalie, Natalia, Natalie, okay. And uh, they were married, and she celebrated Marta and Julia, her two granddaughters, a very important part of her life. And so that's a, a humble recap of, of our beloved Leah's life. I know the family is going to add to that with some words of remembrance. Since today is Hanukkah, we're celebrating her life, and we're remembering all the joy that she brought us and we try to emulate her great qualities, which, of course, to be able to be happy, to find joy, to celebrate life, is really to connect to God, because all sadness comes for a divine reason, for us to ascend over it. The only darkness in this world, in the world of truth, there is no darkness. There is only joy and bliss with God. So, so Leah really was teaching us a very great attribute to aspire to. And that's the matriarch Leah. You know, the rabbis, the Torah says that the eyes of Leah had, they were like, they were crying. She thought she would have to marry Esav, who was not righteous. But she ascended above all of that sadness and was the, one of the greatest prophetesses in Israel. And so too our Leah left that legacy for us to celebrate life with joy and feel a closeness to God. Her father, Yom Tov, there's one mitzvah that we all have in Yom Tov. What is a mitzvah, Yom Tov? V'samachta b'chagecha. We must rejoice. That's a quote from the Torah. We should rejoice on the holiday. On the holiday, we should be joyful. We should be filled with joy. So Leah bas Yom Tov, that's the lesson that she leaves us. May God bless us all to be able to aspire to this great level of emulating joy in life, aspiring to be happy and to follow all of her lofty ways. Uh, I know that at this time we call upon the family. I believe um, her brother was going to speak and her, her daughter-in-law, Natalie, were going to speak. Я пришла в их семью семь лет назад. 
Все знают, что мы из разных наций, из разных религий. У нас никогда не было вражды. Мы жили очень мирно, очень дружно. Лена была удивительная женщина. Лена была очень добрая, светлая, жизнерадостная. Что бы у Лены ни случилось, иногда я чувствовала, как она берет телефон, как она сначала выдыхает воздух, набирается силы, и с улыбкой говорит, «Привет, Наташа! Как дела?» Я говорю, «Лена, все хорошо, как вы?» У меня все хорошо, за меня не волнуйтесь, занимайтесь своими делами. Никогда, чтобы нас не огорчить, никогда, чтобы нас не опечалить. Лена очень любила свою семью, очень любила Алика, своего сына. Это была единственная, я не знаю, вся жизненная ее радость, светлость ее жизни. Это был Алик и ее дети, внучки Марта и Юля. Вы не представляете, насколько она умела их заинтересовать, насколько она их любила. Они бабушку ждали с нетерпением каждую минуту. Как только бабушка позвонила, бабушка Лена к нам едет. Вот так и мы ее называли бабушка Лена. Бабушка Лена с любовью. Бабушка Лена очень любила свою родню, брата, сестру. Она очень любила своих племянников. Она очень за них переживала. Она очень хотела как-то помочь. К сожалению, жизнь сложилась так, что мы очень с ней общались, мы много общались, но эти общения были, к сожалению, у визита у докторов, потому что, как я сказала, у Лены были тяжелые годы, у Лены была нелегкая жизнь, у Лены была очень тяжелая жизнь, и вот эти последние года, я знаю, она, она терпела, она все, она всегда говорила, Наташенька, все будет хорошо, она со всех жила, ее целью были эти внучки, и как вот сейчас она уже лежала, она уже, может, где-то мысли у нее были не те, но приходили дети, она улыбалась, она гладила, она целовала их в головку. И я вот сейчас ее вижу, улыбающаяся, уже бедная, больная, и говорит, Наташенька, все будет хорошо. Лена, мы тебя очень любим. Ты очень рано ушла. Молю Бога, чтобы куда ты ушла в этот мир, не было ни боли, ни грусти, ни печали. Ты отмучилась здесь. Покойся с миром, родная. Здравствуйте всем. Не знаю даже, с чего начать. Это... Во-первых, хочу сказать вам, я присоединяюсь к словам Ревы Керш и Натальи, которые были высказаны здесь. Они, это действительно от души сказанные слова. И что сказать о моей сестре Лене. Это младшая дочка в нашей семье, младший, младший ребенок. На несколько лет младше меня и, естественно, более балована, чем мы все остальные. Ну, балована как? Более веселая, смешная. Как она, я помню ее, именно ее детство, когда она еще ребенком только бегала, кричала. Не кричала для того, чтобы что-то просить или капризничала. Она кричала для того, чтобы радовать всех. Она могла запищать так, что все соседи в нашем небольшом дворе смеялись просто от того, что она радостная. Но жизнь Лены, конечно, была, ну, можно сказать, естественной. Черные, белые полосы, больше белых полос. Ну, все бывало в жизни, это естественно. Но она всегда оставалась такой, какой она и есть, и какая она была. Как заметил <coughs> Рэбэ Кёрш, мой отец был очень человек слова своего, и также Лена. Это, видимо, перешло от нее. Убедить, если она уверена в своей правоте, убедить ее поменять мнение, это было почти невозможно. Лена есть Лена. И даже до последних дней <coughs> она и в больнице, и в Нюрсенхоме сказала, что это должно быть так. Окей. Все знали, что поменять это нельзя. Она так хочет, и даже не перечили ей. Старались уговорить, может, из-под тяжка что-то делали так, как нужно, но она свое, свое слово держала. 
Это трудные дни ее начались уже давно. Она перенесла первую операцию. И может все было по-другому, может она еще жила бы, но это химиотерапия, которую ей оказывали тогда, было для нее невыносимо. Она сказала нет и остановилась. Потому что никто ее не смог убедить, как всегда. Не как всегда, но это был ее характер. Нет, все. И дальше более сложная стадия этой болезни. Это началось где-то месяцев 5-6 назад, может быть. И она из... С каждым днем становилась все слабее и слабее, но она держалась, хотела выздороветь, хотела вы, вы, вылезти. Мы все ей помогали. Я очень благодарен э, всем, кто был при ней в эти дни. Это Мироси, натальная мама здесь, она сама Мироси. Алик почти не отходил от ее постели везде. И насколько могли, мы все были там и помогали. Все делали для того, чтобы поддержать ее. Что еще сказать о ней? Ну, все, что Рэбэ и Кёрш и Наталья сказали, это все от души сказанные слова. И дай Бог, чтобы то, что она желала для этих людей, для своей маленькой семьи, не маленькая, это нормальная средняя сейчас семья, что она для них желала, все самое хорошее, самое светлое, чтобы это сбылось. Ее нет с нами, и пусть, пусть ее душа покоится в том мире, куда она сейчас ушла, и очень трудно говорить о ней о прошедшем времени, ну, трудно привыкнуть к этому, но теперь так будет. Вот фотография, это она, ее более молодые годы. Я думаю, все запомнят ее именно такой, как она там есть. Радостная, веселая, красивая. И ее внуки, внучки, чтобы они помнили ее такой, как она, они видят на карточке. И то, что все хорошее, плохое она никому не сделала. Все хорошее, что было у нее в душе, что передалось этим детям. Спасибо вам, что вы все здесь. Спасибо за поддержку. Дай Бог вам всем здоровья. Words from the heart penetrate the heart. Normally at this time we would, uh, on a regular day, we would say the prayer Kel Mali Rachamim. We would say, please rise. But today, because it's a Yom Tov, we don't recite the prayer. Why? Because the spiritual mechanic of the world would be inappropriate. It's like on Shabbat. We wear tefillin every day. We wear tefillin. We bind our arm and our mind to God. We put on God's name uh, uh, facing our heart. But on Shabbos, the Shabbat testifies. When we experience Shabbat, we don't need the tefillin. would be redundant, would be inappropriate. So our beloved didn't want us to grieve too much. God honored her will. And today, we minimize our prayers of grief. It's a time of holiday, and we do not recite the prayer Kel uh, At At this time, I want to ask forgiveness. It's a custom to ask Mechila. From our departed, forgiveness. Perhaps if I wronged you in any way, Leah, please forgive me. How could we honor properly such a great woman? And I ask on behalf of myself and the people at Menorah Park and maybe the family and the community, if anyone wronged you, please forgive us. We ask Mechila, you should be a Melitz Yosher, you should be an advocate for your family, that God grant them long life and many, many, much happiness as you, as you always wished. I want to thank the 
people from Berkowitz Kuman, they're always a book cat's always so sensitive and caring in their help. At this time, we would ask the uh, pallbearers to come forward. 